Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So God is telling you, don't fear. Remember, the church of Smyrna is going through intense persecution. God's telling them, don't fear the persecution. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That's true. A lot of them were imprisoned. That ye may be tried. They're in trial. And ye shall have tribulation. Notice right here, 10 days. So notice right here that these group of people go through 10 days. Now, the thing is this, is that when it says 10 days right here, if we're going to make this a spiritual, now remember, I'm making this a spiritual application, right, to the church age. If we're going to make this a spiritual application right here, we can be referring to these 10 days as referring to the 10 persecutions of that time. So that can match up in prophecy right here. You might say, does that work? Yes, it definitely works. Biblical hermeneutics. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, remember this. Whenever God says days, you got to keep an ear out, especially in prophecy when he says days. Because, for example, when you look at Daniel chapter 9, he says 70 weeks. He's not talking about our timeline, man-made 70 weeks. He's talking about God's timeline of 70 weeks. God's timeline can be much longer than man's timeline, you got to understand. Now look at 2 Peter chapter 3. Notice what a day seems to God. It can be a long age or period of time. So this would make sense. It could be referring to 10 long periods of time over here. 10 long persecutions. All right, 2 Peter chapter 3. Notice verse 8, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. See, you can't be ignorant, especially when God quotes this kind of stuff in prophetic days, prophetic days. And the book of Revelation is prophecy. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. See, a long timeline can be a day to the Lord and vice versa. Okay, go back to your main text. Go back. All right, so it can be referring to 10 official persecutions of that time and they went through bloody persecution I forgot the emperor's name but he perhaps did the most bloody persecution out of the ten persecutions I think his name was Domitian but he one time said the name of Christianity is extinguished but what happened was Christianity grew more even after that during his timeline that's how the Lord mightily used it okay so they have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death. So be faithful all the way till the day you die, and I will give thee a what? A crown of life. So they can earn a crown of life when they die for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, then this is important. In the book of James, we're not going to turn there, but in the book of James chapter 1, it talks about a crown of life. What is the crown of life, Pastor? The crown of life is referring to a crown of resisting trial and temptation. Testing from the Lord. Now, Revelation 2, it says the church of Smyrna was going through intense testing, right? Yeah. Imagine this. In your Christian life, you fail overcoming your trials for the Lord, right? But imagine if you were to die for the name of Jesus Christ, you automatically get the crown of life. So basically, if someone came in this room and shot your brains out, then you automatically get a crown of life. You don't have to live a whole life uh, where you fail in overcoming trials for the Lord, and then you miss out the crown of life. You can just die for the name of Jesus Christ. So if you're that desperate at the judgment seat of Christ, go be a missionary in North Korea or something, okay? Uh, obviously, obviously, I'm not telling you go get killed, all right? Some people online just misunderstand things and do something crazy, all right? Obviously, I'm not saying that. But the thing is this, is that this is, that is God's, uh, that's an automatic reward. An automatic reward is when you die for the name of Jesus. All right. Let's keep reading right here. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right. So anybody who has an ear out there, which you all do, right? Let him hear what God the Holy Spirit is speaking to these churches. This is why we put all this as a church age application, right? So you all heard already so far today's lesson. You learned a lot, didn't you? Amen. He warned you about replacement theology. 
Watch out for these guys. And even if he was warning you about the modern day nation of Israel, he is warning you about these guys as well. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who are pretty much Jew worshipers right there. Like John Hagee, they think that the Jew can get an automatic ticket to heaven. So that's not how it works. Uh, a lot of churches they are compromising with not just the Catholic Church, but with Jews as well. This is why the Antichrist is going to be a Jew and Catholic by religion, which is very interesting. But aside from that, he that and here, let him hear about this. Black Hebrew Israelite, I'm a Jew, a Jehovah Witness, I'm a Jew, a post-tripper, I'm a Jew. He that and here, let him hear. Church will go through the tribulation. He that and here, let him hear. Persecution, get the crown of life. He that and here, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now let's keep reading. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. If you overcome, you're not going to suffer the second death. Go to Revelation. Revelation. We're going to look at chapter 21, verse 7. Chapter 21, verse 7. So notice right here that this is going to now be a tribulation context. Because remember, I taught you that there was going to be two applications, right? Don't neglect that. Don't neglect that. A lot of people try to apply this only to Christian churches, and that's how they get wrong doctrine. Double application. There's a tribulation doctrine right here. If you overcome, you will not lose your soul in hell. A lot of people get worried about that. They think, well, pastor, because of this verse, am I not burning in hell? No, this is referring to a tribulation doctrine. And I'm going to show you in the previous verses here how it can also be a tribulation doctrine, which will be interesting. But let's look at over here. Revelation 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. See, if you overcome, then you are a child of God, but the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, hell, which is the what? Second death. If you go back to Revelation 2, notice if you overcome, you will not face the second death, hell. So we Christians, obviously... Over Rome. That's so Rome. That's so Catholic right there, my bad. Uh, I was teaching Catholic do doctrine just now. Okay, but anyway. So notice right here, overcome. Overcome. You got to overcome. That way you're a saved child of God and you don't burn in hell. And so people worry about losing their salvation. But this is a tribulation context. Why is that? Because Revelation chapter 1, John was writing as if he is in the tribulation and he told you it would be a tribulation context. So the title of your book is literally called Revelation of Jesus Christ. See, the revelation of Jesus Christ is this end time. So keep an eye out. I, I won't explain it again, but remember, there's a double application. If this is the case, then when we go backwards at verse 10, it might be this way, okay? What might be happening is that in verse 10, it could be that Satan is casting these tribulation saints into prison. See at verse 10? And then God, he's giving them probably instead of days, there might be a difference where it could be years. So it might be 10 years. So perhaps the tribulation could be 10 years long, actually. But I'm not trying to introduce something new or heretical. But me, I'm, I'm open to every single truth as I go verse by verse with you. So that's what I'm doing right here. So it may be the tribulation, it could be a 10-year span. I don't know. Me, my position is that I try to go by as traditional as possible as Bible believers laid out before us. Me, I do that because I want to be as safe as possible because I'm responsible for giving you all right doctrine. I don't want to be some new guy who introducing some new thing because I'm so smart and everybody's wrong. I don't want to be like that type Amen. of person. So anyways, so it could be a 10-year time span. And then these people are suffering persecution by going into prison. This matches up with Matthew 25. Go to Matthew 25. Notice that the saved brethren, during the tribulation, they're cast into prison. Look at Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. Look at verse 34, 34. 
Now, this is after the tribulation, okay? Notice what happens when Jesus comes down after the tribulation. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from what? The foundation of the world. This is a kingdom on earth, not up in heaven. So this shows right here Jesus conquered the Antichrist kingdom and he's currently ruling on the world. This is a millennium. So these are pop people fresh out of tribulation coming inside. What does, why did God say that? Because look at verse 36. Naked and he clothed me. I was sick and he visited me. I was what? In prison and he came unto me. When was God ever in prison? Look at verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. See, Jesus is saying, See, my brethren here, if you did this to my saved children, you did it to me. That's why the people are asking at verse 37 through 39, when did we ever visit you in prison? See that? So this could be referring to a tribulation timeline where they're coming out over here. Let's go back again. If we keep going backwards right here, then this might be even more interesting. If you look at verse 9, this could be then referring to, remember, the Antichrist, what is he going to do? The Antichrist is going to take over the nation of Israel. And he is Roman Catholic. Now, is this showing you something dangerous about this group then? About this teaching then? Oh, yeah. Remember, in the church age, this was a doctrine that promoted the Roman Catholic Church eventually. As a matter of fact, this is prophetic truth. If you look at Revelation 17 and 18, this is the Babylon religion system that will reign during the Antichrist timeline. So the Antichrist, he is from a Roman Catholic background. And the Bible says the Antichrist, as 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he will take over the nation of Israel. If you look at Revelation chapter 11, the Antichrist rules over Jerusalem. Then who is Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 then really referring to? It is referring to these guys. These guys whom the Antichrist will say, Hey, I'm a real Jew. We're all real Jews under this one world religion. Let's kick out the modern day nation of Israel, these fake Jews, and let's replace them. And that's the verse 9 that God is warning you about, the synagogue of Satan. Why? Because Satan, the Antichrist, will take over their temple, their synagogue, during the tribulation timeline. That's what's going to happen.